Welcome to this presentation on test 4. We will be discussing the reading time, the required, and I will discuss parts of the solution that students struggles with in the test and some exam technique as we work through the scenario. The topic covered in test 4 was IAS 7, Statement of Cash Flows. I will focus on the important information in the scenario. Question indicates that you are the accountant responsible for preparing the consolidated cash flow. This should give you an indication that you will be required to compile the consolidated statement of cash flow or at least an extract thereof, and you should therefore note the information in that light. It is very important to identify that the financial statements given to you is the consolidated financials and that the year end for the current year is 31 May 2018. During reading time, it is important to analyze the financials given before rushing through to get to the typed information. Let us first look at the asset section of the financials. Firstly, divide the line items to assign under which activity on the cash flow it would be disclosed. Remember, even though this seems easy, students tend to confuse line items as you may become distracted when writing time starts. Incorrect classification in this regard is a common error and may be avoided if these issues are dealt with during your reading time. The non-current assets are long-term assets. In terms of IAS 7, paragraph 16, the movements of these long-term assets are eligible for classification as investing activities, as these movements are the acquisition and disposal of such assets. It is important to note that Goodwill had a balance at the end of the prior year, however, it is null at current year end. This indicates that a subsidiary was either disposed or Goodwill has been impaired. In this scenario, the subsidiary Cabinet Limited was disposed of and all of the Goodwill is attributable to Cabinet Limited as indicated in Note 5 of the additional information. Furthermore, in the additional information, it is clearly stated that no impairment on Goodwill was recognized during the current year. Inventory and trade receivables are working capital and are usually classified as operating activities since they relate to the main revenue producing activity of Reshuffle Limited. The manner in which it is disclosed will depend on whether the required asked for the direct or indirect method of disclosure. Note, the cash and cash equivalence figure at your end has been given. Looking at the equity section of the financials given, the movement in share capital equity should be disclosed as financing activities in terms of IS 7 paragraph 17. However, in this scenario, there was no movement in this regard. It is important to identify the change in ownership reserve and to note that it arose in the current year. Information relating to this transaction is given under note 4 of the additional information. The carrying amount of NCI is given at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. The closing balance of cash has been given. When analyzing the information given, you would also identify that the opening balance of cash was given. However, the balance is in overdraft and listed under current liabilities. Remember, good exam technique is to fill out these amounts first as they are easy marks to score. The movement of long and short term borrowings as well as equity are disclosed under financing activities per I7 paragraph 17. Items on the statement of profit and loss given will affect the disclosure in operating activities. From the additional information given, Majority of the students were able to calculate and disclose relevant information correctly. I would like to focus on the information that students struggled to calculate and disclose correctly. I would like to discuss Note 5 in the information. Investment in Cabinet Limited. Part B of the required asks for the disposal of subsidiary disclosure note. Many students did not list the assets and liabilities but disclosed the equity of cabinet to arrive at the net asset value. This is incorrect as the disclosure note specifically requires a list of the assets and liabilities to arrive at the net asset value. All the information needed for disclosure of this note was given with the relevant sign. However, 
The errors that students made was using the incorrect signs and not taking into account NCI. It is important to remember that when Reshuffle disposed of 60% of its interest in Cabinet Limited, it lost control. The total net asset value includes NCI portion and should be removed from the net asset value to arrive at the parent's portion being disposed. The other information section of the question clearly stated that NCI is measured at proportionate share. Some students used 40% for NCI. Again, it is important to note that control is lost and all of the parent's portion was initially accounted for as a 75% subsidiary would need to be disposed. The calculation for this was simple by merely taking the net asset value and multiply to the correct NCI percentage share. Another common mistake was not listing all the asset and liabilities individually and taking a net amount. Due to these errors, students lost a lot of easy marks. Many students did not disclose the retained investment in this note. Some students disclose this amount at the incorrect sign. It is important to note that to arrive at the correct cash inflow or outflow, this amount should be removed from the asset value disposed as this portion would remain in reshuffle limited as an asset. The cash and cash equivalents of the subsidiary needs to be removed here to arrive at the actual cash flow as a direct result of the disposal. The loss and sale of shares is a non-cash item and therefore to arrive at the actual cash flow figure this item has to be removed. Students that answered part B correctly did include this item however struggled to arrive at the correct amount. Let me discuss this calculation further. Reshuffle Limited lost control of Cabinet Limited on 31 May 2018. You therefore need to calculate the consolidated profit or loss on 31 May 2018. Note that no profit and reserves needed to be apportioned and distributed to date control was lost as the net asset value figures on 31 May 2018 has been given. Therefore, if the correct process is followed in terms of IFRS 10 paragraph B98, you should arrive at the correct consolidated loss. This paragraph requires that the assets and liabilities of a subsidiary on 31 May 2018 be derecognized. Derecognize the goodwill on initial acquisition. This figure was given. Remember, NCI is measured at proportionate share and not at fair value, and therefore does not share in goodwill. Derecognize NCI at their proportionate share percentage of the net asset value. Recognize the fair value of the remaining interest and recognize the consideration received on disposal. These figures were also given. The resultant consolidated loss is recognized in profit and loss. Note that the signs used in this calculation is different to that used in the disposal note discussed in the previous slide. It is important to note that this item is a non-cash item that is adjusted for under operating activities. The manner in which disclosure in the operating activities should be presented would depend on which method of disclosure was required, the direct or the indirect method. Additional information in this scenario is very important. In this scenario, information regarding the measurement of NCI was given, as well as the policy of the parent to measure investments in subsidiaries and IFRS 9 financial assets. Reshuffle paid a dividend during the current year. This is a cash outflow. The information specifically states that dividends paid and interest paid should be disclosed under operating activities. The information also specifically requires that dividends and interest received to be disclosed under investing activities. The information also states that an additional loan was obtained during the current year. Therefore, this is a cash inflow in the current year and should be disclosed in the financing activity section of the statement of cash flow. As discussed in slide 4, there is no impairment on goodwill for the year. Furthermore, the goodwill on the financials is attributed to Cabinet Limited only. As the information in Note 4 indicates that there was no goodwill in acquisition of Speaker Limited. Let's discuss Note 4 further. In Note 4 of the information, the equity value at date Speaker was acquired is given. It is also specifically stated 
that no goodwill or gain arose on acquisition of speaker prior to the current year. Therefore, to arrive at NCI at acquisition specific for speaker, just multiply the equity by NCI's share of 25%. The retained earnings balance at the beginning of the year and at the date of changing control was given and only NCI portion needs to be calculated. This then brings us to the carrying amount of NCI specific for Speaker Limited. I would like to discuss calculation C10 and C11 in your solution. The steps in calculating the amount to recognize in the change in control reserve in terms of IFRS 10 paragraph B96 is the consideration received less the amount by which NCI was adjusted to account for the new percentage. However, in this scenario, the equity portion was given on the financials, as noted on slide 5. Therefore, if you stop to think about it, what was actually required was to calculate the actual cash amount received due to the partial disposal of interest in Speaker Limited. To solve for the missing figure, the equity portion and the adjustment to NCI should be added together. To calculate the change adjustment to NCI, the carrying amount of NCI for Speaker Limited at the date of partial sale of interest in Speaker Limited is used as calculated in the previous slide. This amount is multiplied by the new NCI percentage over the old. Remember, it's what we want over what we have. The amount arrived at is the value that the new NCI carrying amount should be. Therefore, the difference between this carrying amount and the amount before the transaction is the actual portion that NCI attained as a result of the disposal. The values for NCI have been given and therefore a time-saving manner to arrive at the change in NCI figure due to the change in control is by using the figures given in the scenario. As we noted in slide 5, we have the balances for NCI at the beginning and at the end of the year. Therefore, you need to stop and think about what is required of you. You will notice that the opening balance of NCI on the financials given is used as a negative in this calculation as NCI is a credit balance in the consolidated books. The movement between opening and closing NCI balance is then calculated. Remember the NCI opening balance consists of the NCI portion of both Cabinet Limited as well as Speaker Limited at the beginning of the year as both subsidiaries were purchased prior to the current year. However, the closing balance consists only of Speaker Limited as Cabinet was disposed of during the year. The disposal of the subsidiary with the entire NCI portion of Cabinet Limited disposed of is debited to the NCI account. The calculation of this figure has already been discussed in slides 7 and 8. As NCI increases on the credit side, the profit for the year figure attributable to NCI given on the consolidated statement of profit and loss will therefore be credited. The resultant figure is the actual value by which NCI was adjusted to account for the change in percentage holding. Part B of the required asked for the disclosure note to the consolidated cash flow statement for the disposal of Cabinet Limited. This has already been discussed. Part A of the required instructed you to prepare the consolidated statement of cash flow for the year in the 31 May 2018 according to the direct method. It is important to note that there are two presentation marks available and these marks are easy to score by just providing disclosure as required. The difference between the direct and indirect method lies in the calculation of cash generated from operations. The indirect method starts with the profit before tax figure which is adjusted for changes in working capital and non-cash items. It is also very important to read the please note section as it provides further guidance and helps the student identify what is required. This section specifically states that the amount for cash receipts from customers and cash paid to suppliers and employees must be calculated. Let's discuss the disclosure required in terms of the direct method. Usually, interest and dividends received and paid as well as tax paid will be disclosed under operating activities. 
However, the information specifically indicated that interest and dividends received should be disclosed under investing activities. The direct method requires that the cash generated from operations figure should be arrived at by calculating the cash received from customers and cash paid to suppliers and employees. Let's discuss these calculations. This figure should be calculated by taking into account revenue and changes in trade receivables. The revenue figure as well as the consolidated trade receivables opening and closing balance is given. This then makes this calculation quite simple. The trade receivables for the subsidiary disposed, Cabinet Limited, has also been given and therefore should be removed from the trade receivables balance to identify actual debtor cash inflows during the year. Cash paid to suppliers and employees. This calculation is very important and if asked to calculate usually carries a lot of marks. However, please note that if this calculation is not disclosed or at least referenced correctly on the cash paid to suppliers and employees line item on the cash flow statement, then the calculation will not be marked. Therefore, disclose the item and reference correctly to the calculation and transfer the resultant amount to the face of disclosure as good exam technique. The very first items that should be included in this calculation is the cost of sales and other expenses. These amounts are the foundation of this calculation and all adjustments for cash items are based on the items typically included in these amounts, taking into account any additional information given in the question. Adjustments for non-cash items are made to derive the actual cash outflow related to trading activities. The amount of all non-cash adjustments required in this scenario were given. The only non-cash adjustment that needed a calculation is the consolidated loss and disposal of the subsidiary. The calculation of this has already been discussed in slide 8. The loss would be included in other expenses in the statement of profit and loss. As this loss incurred is a non-cash item, it would need to be removed from other expenses. Many students did not make this adjustment in the test. Depreciation is not actual cash outflows. This amount will typically be included in other expenses and should be removed. The additional information specifically stated that other income consists of dividends and interest received. Therefore, any additional income item would be accounted for under other expenses. Consequently, the profit and sale of plant as a non-cash item is removed in this calculation. Note one of the additional information specifically stated that the amount written off for the vehicle was included in other expenses. As a write-off is not an outflow of actual cash, it should be added back. The insurance proceeds would effectively set off the amount written off. Many students use the net amount, however, as good exam technique always use gross amounts and show the individual inflows and outflows instead of net amounts. Remember to account for the changes in working capital directly attributable to cost of sales and expenses such as trade payables and inventory. As identified during reading time, the balances of these line items have been given. Therefore, the movement of trade payables and inventory is easy to establish. Do not forget to remove the portion of inventory and payables attributable to the subsidiary disposed, Cabinet Limited. The amount of Cabinet Limited's inventory and trade payables at date of disposal of the subsidiary was given as discussed. However, beware of signage. There were students that subtracted the amount from the trade payables movement, which is incorrect. The logic followed to determine whether to add or subtract should be understood. Ordinarily, the positives indicate a debit and negatives indicate a credit. As trade payables being a liability increases on the credit side, the removal of an item from this balance should be debited. Therefore, the removal of trade payables in the subsidiary disposed should be debited. Similarly, the concept is the same for inventory. Inventory is an asset and increases on the debit side. Therefore, a removal from an asset item should be a credit. 
Therefore, disposal of subsidiary is credited with the given inventory figure of Cabinet Limited. Thank you for listening to the feedback on Test 4 for FAC 4862 and good luck with your preparations for the exam.